When a Magic the Gathering card is too powerful, it can be banned, making it illegal to play in a format, but this usually doesn't happen until many months or even years after the card is first printed. When a card gets banned right after its release, you know that Wizards really messed up and that card is truly broken, so today we're looking at the fastest bannings in the history of Magic the Gathering. Honorable Mention Ivory Tower restricted 56 days after release. Technically, Ivory Tower just misses out on our list. Its restriction 56 days after being printed in Antiquities puts it just outside the top 10 fastest bannings, but I couldn't resist mentioning the artifact just because it was also on our list of the worst cards to ever be banned. The fact that one of the least powerful cards ever added to the Magic ban list is also one of the fastest cards to be banned shows just how strange magic was in the early days. Today Ivory Tower isn't banned anywhere, but it also doesn't see play anywhere because gaining a bit of life each turn just isn't enough. If you want to hear more about Ivory Tower's banning, make sure to check out our video about the worst cards to ever be banned in Magic the Gathering. Number 10, Maze of Ith restricted 50 days after release. Through the eyes of a 2023 Magic player, it's hard to think of Maze of Ith as a problematic card. Instead, it's more likely to be that card that you used to play in your commander deck but just can't quite find the room for anymore now that more powerful utility lands have been printed. But back in the earliest days of Magic, Maze of Ith was considered to be a big problem. At the time, creatures were horrible, and if any halfly decent ones did make it to print, they would often didn't end up banned like Juggernaut and Curdape. However, most decks needed to win the game with a creature eventually because there weren't really many alt win cons at the time. So games of magic would also come down to these massive control battles. And once both players had spent all the removals and sweepers, someone would try to win the game with a Sarah Angel or something similar. And that's where Maze of Ith came in. Maze of Ith lets any deck shut down a creature each turn for free. Some people have compared it to the original Phyrexian Mana spell just like Dismember lets a mono blue deck kill a creature, which normally they aren't supposed to be able to do, Maze of Ith would let a mono blue deck keep a creature at bay forever by removing it from combat. Combined with creatures being so bad at the time, in the presence of powerful sweepers like Wrath of God and of Renerals disc, Maze of Ith made it nearly impossible for a creature deck to win the game. So 60 days after it was printed in the dark, Wizards restricted it so players could only use a single copy in their decks. At the time, Wizards didn't really out outright ban cards. Need a maze of it of your own? Well, you can snag one from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Number nine, combo winner with Talarian Academy Windfall in Stroke of Genius, banned in Standard, Extended, Legacy, and Vintage 50 days after release. Urza Saga might be the most broken magic set of all time. It unleashed a hellish combo of fast mana like Talarian Academy and mass card draw effects like Time Spiral, Stoke of Genius, and Windfall. The end result was an era of magic known as Combo Winner, where decks in all formats use these cards to try to combo off and win the game maybe as early as turn one. The idea of the decks were pretty simple. Dump your hand of mana producing artifacts, make a ton of mana with Talarian Academy, Refill your hand with Time Spirals and Wind Falls, and Time Spiral can even untap Talarian Academy to make even more mana, and you just keep doing this until eventually you make enough mana that you can kill your opponent by forcing them to draw their entire deck with a Stoke of Genius. The deck was so powerful and so consistent that it literally made Magic players quit the game altogether, which made Wizards take action by banning Talarian Academy and Windfall in all formats just 50 days after they were printed, while Stoke of Genius was also also banned in Legacy and Restricted in Vintage, although it remained legal in Standard and Extended. Despite all this, the combo winner problem was far from solved, but more on this in a minute. Number 8, Oko Thief of Crowds in Once Upon a Time, banned in Standard. 45 days after release. There's actually been two different times in Magic that a card has been banned 45 days after it was printed, with the first being Oko Thief of Crowns in Once Upon a Time in Standard. Both cards were released in the now infamous Throne of Eldraine set in September 2019, and they managed to make it until the middle of November 2019 before they were banned, although many players thought they should have been banned much sooner. Once Upon a Time's banning is pretty straightforward. Free spells 
are always powerful and often too powerful. Once Upon a Time made decks too consistent. At the time, the most powerful thing you could do in Standard was play a Guild of Use on turn one and then use its extra mana to cast an Oko Thief of Crowns on turn two. Once Upon a Time's ability to dig for Gilded Use for free, assuming it's your first spell you cast, made this happen far too often. Add in that green was the dominant color in Standard at the time, and Wizards banned Once Upon a Time to try to power drown green by making it less consistent. Ogo Thief of Crowns was essentially just a design and testing mistake. It turns out that making a 3-3 elk every other turn while also downgrading your opponent's best artifacts and creatures into elks and gaining life as necessary, all while gaining loyalty for just 3 mana often starting on turn 2 because of Gilded Use, was not just good, but it was way too good. During a live stream, Wizards mentioned that they underestimated the possibility of using Oko as removal on opponent's creatures, with their testing apparently focused on turning their own food tokens into elks with Oko's plus two ability. Somebody's gonna ask, you know, hey, what's the deal with Oko? Why, what happened with Oko? What are your thoughts on Oko? Mm -hmm. um, so Oko, had a goal to be a strong card in standard, but we did underestimate how strong the uh, plus one is on as a defensive ability to like remove other creatures and artifacts. The end result was that Simic Oko decks dominated standard in a nearly unprecedented way, culminating with a mythic championship where 70% of decks played Oko in the Simic food deck, having a winning record in every matchup in standard except one, even though all the other decks in standard were built specifically to try to beat Oko. This led to Oko's banning in standard just 45 days after it was printed, and over the coming months and years, it would be banned in Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy as well. Number 7, Underworld Breach, banned in Legacy 45 days after release. There's several cards in Magic's history that let you recast the cards in your graveyard, with some of them being quite strong. Yagmas Will has been banned and extended in Legacy and restricted in Vintage. Passed in Flames is a key card in Storm decks in both Legacy and Modern, and both of these cards have a safety valve built in. When a card goes to your graveyard, you have to exile it, so you can't keep casting the same card over and over and over again. Underworld Breach is similar to Yagmas Will or Passed in Flames. Once it hits the battlefield, you can cast cards from your graveyard thanks to the escape mechanic, but it has one huge twist. Once the card resolves, it goes back into your graveyard rather than to exile, so you can cast the same card over and over again. The downside of Underworld Breach is that the cards you cast from your graveyard have an additional cost. You need to exile three cards from your graveyard along with paying the card's mana cost. The idea was this would serve as a safety valve. You can't just keep casting the same card too many times in a row because eventually you'll run out of cards in your graveyard to exile. But legacy players pretty quickly realized this wasn't actually that much of a drawback because they had the perfect card to get around it in Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze costs two mana and it mills three cards, but it also has a storm mechanic, so it's copied for each spell you cast before it during the turn. An Underworld Breach deck emerged in Legacy that looked to combine Breach with Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond for a super fast consistent combo kill. The idea was you would play Underworld Breach and then play Lion's Eye Diamond. You sack the Lion's Eye Diamond to make three mana and also discard your hand which is supposed to be a drawback but is oddly an upside if you're trying to fill your graveyard with ex cards for escape and then use the mana to cast a brain freeze from your graveyard to target yourself and mill nine more cards. At this point you just go infinite and win the game. You cast Lion's Eye Diamond a few times to make some more mana. When you run out of cards to pay for escape you bring freeze yourself to mill some more cards. Once you do this a bunch of times, you can either brain freeze your opponent to make them mill their entire deck, or simply escape a Thassa's Oracle into play from your graveyard to win the game with its enters a battlefield trigger. The speed and consistency of this combo, along with its absurd win right in the hands of skilled pilots, led to Wizards adding the card to the ban list less than two months after it was printed. Number 6, Lurus of the Dream Den in Zerta the Dawn Waker in Legacy. 31 days after release. 
Companion will undoubtedly go down is one of, if not the biggest mistake mechanic in Magic's history. The idea of the mechanic is pretty simple, make players build their deck to meet a weird requirement like playing all odd or even mana value cards, playing all cheap cards, playing all cards with activated abilities, and if they meet that requirement, they would get a free powerful bonus card, their companion. It turns out that being able to start the game with 8 cards rather than just 7 is incredibly powerful, and over the first days after Ikoria and the companion mechanic released, it dominated literally every format in Magic, from standard all the way back to vintage. While all of 10 companions saw a play, two were especially dominant in older formats. Zerda the Dawn Waker allowed legacy decks to make infinite mana with Grim Monolith, and since you would always start the game with access to Zerda as your companion, you were essentially a one card combo deck. All you needed to do was draw the Grim Monolith and you'd go infinite and win the game, which led to it being banned in Legacy just 31 days after it released. Lures of the Dream Den is even a more extreme example. Its restriction, playing all permanents that cost 2 mana or less, is basically non-existent in a format like Legacy or Vintage where many of the most popular permanents cost 0, 1, or 2 mana anyway. This led to many top tier decks in those formats being able to play Lurus with essentially 0 cost. Lurus decks quickly took over the metagame, which led to Wizards banning the Nightmare Cat in Legacy and Vintage, with the latter being especially shocking since cards aren't banned in Vintage, they're restricted so you can only play a single copy. But but since you can only play a single companion anyway, they were forced to take the unprecedented step of outright banning lures and vintage as well. Hilariously, these bannings wouldn't solve the companion problem. Shortly thereafter, Wizards took another unprecedented step, eroding the entire mechanic. So now you have to pay 3 mana to add your companion to your hand rather than just casting it naturally. And even with this change, a change that essentially doubled the cost of the most popular companions, over the next 3 years, Lurus would be banned in both Modern and Pioneer, while another companion, Yarian Sky Nomad, would also be banned in Modern. All this to say, why Lurus and Zerter were both incredibly broken, the real problem here was the companion mechanic, which dominated and arguably ruined the game in a way that had never been seen before in its 30 year history. Number 5, Omnath Locus of Creation, banned in Standard 17 days after release. In 2020 Zendikar Rising, Wizards decided to bring the popular landfall mechanic back to standard, headlined by a new version of an iconic character in Omnath Locus of Creation. Standard was already in a precarious spot. A year earlier, Throne of Alderaan, one of the most broken sets in the modern era of magic, was printed, and even after an absurd number of bannings, including Oko Thief of Frowns, Once Upon a Time, Fires of Invention, and Cauldron Familiar, the set, and more specifically, specifically the adventure mechanic, were dominating the standard format. Zendikar Rising brought with it standard rotation, and players were trying to hold out hope that the format would change and something would unseat Eldorain and Adventures as the dominant force in standard. Instead, players quickly realized that the best card from Zendikar Rising, Omnath Locust of Creation worked really well in an adventure shell with cards like Beanstalk Giant and Escape to the Wilds to make extra land drops to trigger Omnath. So rather than helping free standard from Eldraine's grip, Omnath actually just strengthened its hold on the format as a source of life gain to defeat aggro and ramp to quickly flood the board with threats. According to Wizards, their data showed that four color adventures with Omnath had a favorable matchup against nine of the ten most played non-Omnath decks in standard. Standard, and when 23 of the 32 players in the Grand Finals tournament showed up with Omnath decks, Wizards decided they'd finally had enough and banned the Chase Mythic from their newest set just 17 days after it released. Number 4, Memory Jar, banned everywhere 14 days after release. Remember number 9 on our list, where we talked about Combo Winner and how Urza's Saga broke basically every magic format and led to a ton of bannings? Well, Memory Jar was printed in Urza's Legacy, which dropped about 6 months after Urza's Saga, on the tail end of Combo Winner. Memory Jar is notorious for being the first card in Magic's history to ever be emergency banned. For most of Magic's life, 
bannings happen on a regular schedule four times a year alongside each set release but memory jar proved to be such a problem that wizards banned it off schedule just 14 days after it was printed in urza's legacy to understand why we gotta look back on magic at the time remember this was combo winter a time when over the course of a few months between december 1999 and march of 2000 wizards banned a ridiculous number of cards to try to end combo winter and fix standard this included delay Academy and Windfall and Lotus Petrol and Time Spiral and a bunch more. And all these changes led to players feeling kind of hopeful that maybe Combo Winner would finally come to an end and Magic would be fun again. But then Wizards released Urza's Legacy and along with it memory jar and memory jar is a card that looks a lot like time spiral or windfall these banned combo pieces that lets a player draw a new seven card hand to keep comboing and players lost it many players simply quit the game once wizards printed memory jar and those who remained started making house rules for tournament play disallowing memory jar essentially you had these tournament grinders having the rule zero conversation before their tournament like casual commander players and deciding we'll just make a gentleman's agreement that no one will play memory jar in this event after wizards saw this they quickly took action and added memory jar to the ban list just two weeks after it was printed and honestly it mostly worked after banning one last combo piece in mind over matter in june of 2000 combo winner officially ended and standard went through a period of peace with no more bannings for five years until wizards messed up a little bit in mirrodin and printed skull clamp number three three to bolts trickery banned in modern 10 days after release to bolts trickery was supposed to be a chaotic red take on a counter spell for two mana you can counter anything but that thing is replaced by a random non-land card basically the idea of Tibalt's trickery is it's the counter spell version of the classic red removal spell chaos warp incredibly flexible and efficient but also super risky unfortunately Tibalt's trickery is missing three key words rather than saying counter target spell it should say counter target spell in opponent controls players quickly realized that the true power of Tibalt's trickery wasn't using it to counter your opponent's spells it was using it to counter your own spells to try to upgrade something tiny like a ornithopter or a mitra's bobble into a game ending threat like an emercole or a tybalt cosmic impersonator in the 10 days between when Ikoria released in 2021 and Tibalt's Trickery was banned in Modern, a couple of different trickery decks developed, and they were all incredibly broken, slamming massive game-ending Eldrazi into play as early as turn 1 or turn 2. It was absolutely absurd. Boy, Modern's, modern's easy these days. Easy mode. <laughs> wow, this is so unfair. Like, what's our opponent going to do about this? They're playing some sort of, like, Naya mid-range pile. Like, what, it, what is their, what is their, like, how... How do they ever beat this? These decks were so broken that Wizards not only banned Tybalt's Trickery itself, but they also banned Simeon's Spirit Guide, which was offering the fast mana necessary to cast Tybalt's Trickery or Cascade spells on turn one, and they changed how the Cascade mechanics work to keep players from cascading into Valky God of Lies, but casting the Tybalt side of the MDFC in an attempt to fix the modern format. Number two, Mind's Desire. Banned in Legacy and Restricted in Vintage six days after release. Storm is an inherently broken mechanic, so much so that when Magic's head designer Mark Rosewater decided to create a list of mechanics ranked by how likely they would be to return in a future standard set, he named it the Storm Scale because Storm was a perfect 10, making it incredibly unlikely to ever return to a standard set. It's just that broken. The first time Wizards printed the Storm mechanic was in 2001 Scourge, while the set had several Storm All Stars like Legacy Staple, Tendrils of Agony, Mill Finisher, Brain Freeze, Bandon Pulper, Temporal Fission, and Modern Combo Piece Dragon Storm. The one Storm card that stood out above the rest was Mind's Desire. By itself, the six mana sorcery lets you cast a random card for free from your library. But what truly made the card broken was the Storm mechanic 
Strike, which lets you copy the Storm spell for every card you played before it during the turn. In formats like Legacy and Vintage, there's tons of free spells that add mana, like Black Lotus, Moxin, Dark Ritual, and more. As a result, it was pretty easy for Dex to cast a bunch of cheaper free spells and some cantrips, and then cast a Mind's Desire to play a huge chunk of their deck for free. If one of those free cards was another copy of Mind's Desire, then the Storm player would probably just play their entire deck for zero mana, theoretically as early as turn one. As a result, Mind's Desire didn't even make it a week before it was banned in Legacy and restricted in Vintage. Even today, with 22 years worth of power creep in Magic, it's still considered to be so degenerate and so broken that it remains on the ban list for both formats. Number one, Lutri the Spell Chaser, banned in Commander before it was even released. I honestly wasn't sure whether Lutri should be included on our list today or not. On one hand, the Companion is the only card in the history of Magic to be pre-banned, banned before it was even released, with it being banned in Commander the very day it was previewed. On the other hand, Wizards knew the card would be pre-banned in Commander when they printed it and decided to release it anyway rather than changing it, presumably because they designed Lutri and the Companion mechanic primarily for 60 card formats instead of Commander. This makes Lutri unique, because in general, Wizards tries to avoid printing cards that are so strong they need to be banned, which means pre-bannings quite literally never happen. If a card is so strong Wizards thinks they need to pre-ban it, they simply change the card to make it less powerful or decide not to print it altogether, rather than releasing it and banning it, which is why Lutri feels sort of odd topping our list. As to why Lutri was pre-banned in Commander, its companion restriction makes it quite literally literally free in any deck with blue and red mana. Because Commander is a 100 card singleton format, each non-land card in your deck will always have a different name, so every Commander deck just accidentally meets Lutri's restriction, I guess discounting a handful of fringe cards like Relentless Rats, Persistent Petitioners, or Dragon's Approach, which break this rule. The entire idea of the Companion mechanic is if you want a Companion, you need to pay a cost while you're building your deck to meet its Companion restriction, and if you do, you're rewarded with this free bonus card that you can access at any time. In 60 card formats, playing just one copy of each card is a huge disadvantage because it reduces the consistency of your deck, but in Commander there's no disadvantage to playing Lutri as your companion whatsoever. As such, if Lutri was legal, it would be optimal to play it as a companion in every single Commander deck that was in its colors, regardless of the theme of your deck. Basically, if Lutri was legal, Commander decks in its colors would be 99 cards rather than 100 cards, because one card would always be Lutri as a companion. Instead, Lutri was thankfully banned in Commander, and also Brawl, a digital-only format with similar rules, before Ikoria even released. Anyway, those are the fastest bannings in the history of the game. If you want even more magic, make sure to check out the video about the most hated card from every year of magic, or maybe the one where we break down the least powerful cards that have ever been banned.